I'm going to be taking you through the idea process, the ideation of an illustration all the way to finish. Okay, so here we go. The main purpose of this illustration that I'm making is for a webinar for schoolism.com all about starting your journey as an artist. So you can see in each of these illustrations, these little thumbnails, I depict a little person there holding what I was thinking would be like a Wacom pen to paint digitally with. That was the initial idea. So I made three thumbnails. I thought they were all pretty good. But the way that I do things is I try to exhaust all possibilities. So even if you do a really good thumbnail, even if you do four really good thumbnails, keep going to about nine or 10 of them, right? Really push yourself to exhaust all possibilities. And actually the thumbnail that I ended up going with for the illustration was not one of the first three, just to let you know. Now, if you add this into your process where you're exhausting yourself with the amount of thumbnails that you do, you'll find that the first bunch of thumbnails are probably a lot easier. The second half of thumbnails, those are the ones that really stretch your brain, really stretch your imagination because you've exhausted all the easiest, the, the ideas that come to mind right away but that also leaves much more opportunity for completely new ideas that you never would have got to if you didn't have to break out nine or ten different ideas okay so you can kind of see the vibe of each one of these ideas here and after that you pick one and so the one that i picked was the one right in the middle it was depicting looking into a cave these these three characters looking into a cave and they're about to start their journey, right? Kind of like their artistic journey. Now, as I started to sketch this out as a final illustration, I actually changed the idea a little bit. You can see a little character in the front, kind of like I was thinking was already in the cave, looking deep into the cave and seeing something, right? Some sort of mysterious light coming from within the cave. Now, as I sketch, the first thing that I'm doing is just like the thumbnails, right? I used a very limited value palette of only like three or four tones, and I sketched out the entire thing like that. Now, that's what I would consider the plan, and all I need to do is stick to that plan, and everything else in my illustration will look great. Right, so I start painting the outside, I keep it all light tones relatively, making sure that the relationships between the tones are very much the same as the original black and white sketch. Now the idea behind this illustration was that the light is just, just getting into this cave. And that, that was the idea I really clung on to that I really loved about the uh, initial thumbnail, right? Because it kind of represents that these characters they're all coming from a place of safety, of warmth, of you know, bright, shiny, it's just lovely where they come from. And now they're about to go on this new journey. They're about to start their careers as artists going into a world unknown, mysterious, right? A bit adventurous, perhaps. So you could also see this very clear change in colors as we're talking about the inside of the cave versus the outside of the cave. I use a bunch of different tones here, but you could see that they're all very much warm tones as opposed to the outside where it's nice and cool, nice and refreshing, right? I just want to create a very stark contrast between the outside world and within the cave. After that, I just, I plopped in a big close up of a bunch of dirt just to add in a bunch of texture there. And I set it to multiply, so all those values are added to all the values underneath. There you can see a picture of the close-up of the dirt. I actually will keep very little of that dirt texture in the end, but it's just nice to put in to save myself a bunch of time from just noodling a whole bunch of texture. 
Now the characters here, I'm thinking to make them in different poses, kind of like different stages of climbing up into the cave. And at this point, we have this in Photoshop, so I open up a secondary window, shrink it down so I can see my painting from far away. I don't want to lose sight of how my painting is turning out as a whole. Right? And so because of this, I keep that smaller window open. That way I can look in there and I can see how does it look like as an entire painting as a whole. And I can look into the larger view of my painting and see how do those details look? Do they look good by themselves as well? Or up close, do they look good? You can see a little purpley kind of pathway that I drew really quickly. It is literally like a 20 second little sketch. Just creating a pathway within the composition here. I was thinking that's kind of like the dangerous, adventurous kind of pathway that these three characters are about to embark on. Right, and so you can see here I'm painting over a heck of a lot of the texture that I originally put in there of the ground. And initially I was thinking of adding a purple kind of light coming from within the cave. I was thinking that that would look nice and mysterious and everything. Now will I change my mind later on? Perhaps. In the initial sketch I had a character in the foreground so I'm just going to sketch in that character very quickly because at this point actually I don't know if I actually want this character in there or not. I'm thinking about the words that would go over top of this illustration, the title of the webinar, right? and I'm thinking that I wouldn't want it to go over top of that character, so let's just take the character out. This leaves a lot of nice space in the illustration for the text. Now you know what? I'm thinking that we don't want the purple light in there. Purple is, again, kind of like a cool color, a cool hue, and that will create more contrast at the bottom of the image. I'd rather have something a bit more unified, so I switched the purple to something warm. Yeah, that looks much better, right? Let's make it warm, it feels a lot more unified. Also, this continues that overall pattern of uh, warm tones within the cave, cool tones outside, right? Creating that visual contrast even more. Now I painted most of this painting from kind of far away you know, an angle that I can see the entire painting. But since these little characters are so small, I just want to zoom in. Let's zoom in a little bit and do the leaves, do the faces. Let's expand the leaves behind the characters so that we can see those little tiny leaves on their heads a little bit clearer. I made them extra bright because that is the light penetrating through the leaves and lighting up those leaves even more so we can see them as these really bright, bright tones. Adjusting some atmosphere within the cave and just some final touches here. I was thinking to get rid of those little light areas. They're a bit distracting. Okay, and there we go. Final finished painting from thumbnails, from the very seed of the idea all the way to the finished illustration. I hope you liked it. I also teach on schoolism.com if there's any questions, if you want to learn from me. Also, last thing is that actually it's really great timing because schoolism, there's something amazing happening on schoolism right now for a limited time. And I'd love to show you a tiny little video all about it. Okay, here we go. The Schoolism Summer Sale is on now. From now until July 11, save over 30% on a one-year subscription and get immediate access to over 50 art courses, attend weekly live webinars hosted by top industry artists like Lin Chen, Aaron Saud, Marcel Vignali and Pernil Orr, and watch all of the new courses launching in the next 12 months as soon as they're available. No matter what your artistic goals are this summer, Schoolism has you covered. And with savings like these, there's no better time than now to kickstart your art education and stay productive all summer long. This offer is only available for a limited time, so subscribe today and we'll see you on schoolism.com.